Recap in minutes. Today we will be going through an action, crime, and drama movie from 2023 entitled, Transfusion. There will be spoilers ahead in this video, so chill out and enjoy. At the start of the movie, we see some soldiers sneaking into an enemy military installation. They take out the guards at the entrance and make their way into the fort's bunkers. One of the soldiers, Ryan Logan, is a sniper and he takes out the guards outside the walls of the fort. Once they get to a safe bunker, they start taking out the militants inside. During the interrogation, one of the militants takes a shot at Logan and he gets injured. His fellow soldier calls for an ambulance while they radio back to the situation room. Later on, we see Logan and his son, Billy Logan, out hunting in the forest. Logan teaches his son how to take shots at the target but Billy hesitates. Eventually, Logan takes the shot and they set up camp for the night. They chop up the deer and cook it for dinner. After eating, Billy goes for a little walk in the forest and comes across a howling dog. He gets scared and calls out for his dad. Logan takes out the dog with his sniper rifle, but it makes Billy a little sad. Logan tries to cheer him up by letting him drive the truck on the way home. At night, they reach home after the camping trip and Logan meets his pregnant wife, Justine. He tells her that they had a good adventurous time camping today, and expresses his wish to see his other child too. In the morning, before going to the base, he prepares breakfast for his son and wife. He suggests a name for the next child and laughs at different other suggestions. In the next scene, he sits with the recruits of the Australian Army at the base. His work is to instruct the newbies on battle techniques and sniper training. This time he talks about courage and fear to them. He starts saying that they are just men like others, and just trying to walk a line between courage and fear. He says that taking on a task that they're ill-equipped to do is pure courage. He tells them that his job is to equip them for any situation, in which they find themselves in the line of duty. On the other hand, Justine was taking their son to school, and got hit by another car on the road. Justine is seen unconscious, while Billy is terrified in the car. After seven years, Billy's lawyer is shown arguing with the magistrate over his troubled childhood. The magistrate asks the lawyer where his father is. When she points out at him, she orders him to stand up and give his position on his offenses. She tells him that they are having him a third time there, and looks at his record of crimes he committed. She briefs him on his offenses which were, stealing, drug possession, and now, the destruction of property. She reminds him that he has been picked up by the police on all occasions. She tells him that she knows that he has got only him as his parents after his mother's death, and expresses her sympathies with him. She lets them go by warning them that if he appears before this court again, he will either be sent away or taken from his care. In the next scene, Logan takes him to his school. The principal asks Billy to wait outside, as they have to talk about some important things. The principal reminds Logan that he has not paid his last term's fees. He tells him that there are good alternatives to the school. He advises him to take him to some public school, where he might be happier, because he remained absent for 10 days in his school. He tells him that it might be happier for his son and easier for him. The next day, he was doing a job as a sales representative. He goes to a liquor shop in the city of Perth. He starts introducing himself and his menu card to the employee there. The employee ignores him and asks him to get out of his shop. He comes back to his car but feels uncomfortable, returns to him, warns him of his words, and leaves. After some time, he goes to see his military friend, Johnny, he tells him that he needs some money for himself and his son. He asks him if he would be interested in doing something with him. He tells him to steal some money from a leader of a drug mafia's locker. He hesitates but eventually agrees with him, as he needed money for them. The next moment, they reach the house and steal the cash from the vault. They successfully escape from his house later. The next day, his manager calls him at the office, and asks him why he threatened the liquor shop's owner at work. He removes him from the job when he could not promise him not to do that again. At night, when Logan was checking his hunting rifle, Billy comes to him and says he wants to go to a friend's party. He lets him go under one condition that he will be back soon. After some time, he goes to his school friend's party, and starts to enjoy it with them. His friends pump him to drive one of his friends, Jesse's father's car. Firstly, they do not agree to take the car, but when Jesse confirms that his father is not at home, they drive it out. And because Billy was not sober, he crashes the car at the dunes. On the other hand, Logan was busy spying on Johnny and his mates at the bar. Johnny was trying his best to divert their suspicious minds from him to some other person. Ned, the head of the group, asks them to stop blaming each other and find the main culprit. But his man does not believe Johnny, and says he does not smell right whenever he hears Johnny's name. He suspects Johnny of playing with Ned. The next moment, Logan comes home and he gets a call from his son, who informs him about the accident. 
He calms him down and reaches the spot where he has crashed the car. He starts inspecting the car, Billy, and his friends. Billy's friends tell him that it was Billy, who was drunk driving the car. Logan feels helpless and takes him back home. In the next scene, he goes to the site, and sets the car on fire to erase the evidence against his son. He goes to meet Jesse's father, whose car Billy was driving last night. The man, Jim Woods, tells him that his son has told everything to him about Billy and the car. He also tells him that he knows about him and his military career. Now he asks Logan where his car is. He replies that he burned it after figuring out that he had the insurance. He asks him to make an insurance claim for theft and burns. Jim tells him that he is a solicitor, and he knows what will come to him after a false insurance claim. He could go to jail, or at least, he would not be practicing law again. Now he talks about his son, and tells him that his son told him that Billy is a ratbag. He is already in trouble with the cops. He warns him that he is putting everything on his son's shoulder, as he was driving the car while drunk. Logan requests him to leave him alone and give him some days, he will pay him the price of the car. Jim agrees and Logan leaves his house afterward. The next moment, he takes his son to a medical clinic for his checkup. There he gets into the past and remembers when his wife had that accident. He remembers when the doctor came to him, and told him that his wife and child were in danger. Meanwhile, Billy comes to him and asks him to go. After that, Logan goes to Johnny again, and tells him that he needs more money this time. He tells him that Billy did something unbelievable, and he has to pull him out of that. So he asks him to cooperate with him to get this amount of money. He indicates that he will have to engage in the action this time. Logan does not think about anything else and agrees immediately. At night, Johnny was waiting for someone along the road, and Logan kept an eye on him. Ned comes there with his man and sits in his car. He tells him that they have figured out that he has stolen the money from his home. Johnny does not lie this time, and accepts that he stole the money. He also tells him that it was dirty money, so he did not think much before stealing it. Ned gets angry and his man takes his gun at Johnny's head. He asks him where the money is. He replies that it is in the back of the truck. Ned comes out to open the car, but Logan snipes him out there. He kills many of his men after that shot. Johnny digs their graves and asks Logan to go home. He appreciates him saying that he just eliminated the drug dealers. When he comes back home, he thinks about his time with his wife in the hospital, when she was on the deathbed, and the doctor was saying that she could not survive the internal bleeding. He cries in pain at losing her in the corridor. In the next scene, he goes to Jim and waits for him in the car. He hands over the money to him and tells him to stop looking for his son now. After some time, Johnny was listening to some music in his house. Suddenly his door knocks, and when he opens it, an assassin enters to kill him. Both of them fight there but eventually, Johnny kills him. The next moment, he goes to Logan's house and yells at Billy, and asks him where his father is. When he comes home, he tells him that the drug dealers have sent an assassin to kill him in his apartment. Logan ignores him saying that if someone has come to kill him, it is his problem and he cannot do anything. Johnny yells at him and says he owes him for what he did for him, as he gave him a lot of money. Logan comes near him and pushes him to come to his senses. Johnny starts sobbing and apologizes for yelling. When he hugs him, he grabs him hard and grunts. Somehow Logan frees himself and they both start fighting. After some intense fighting, Johnny picks up his pistol and gets up to take a shot at him. Meanwhile, Billy comes out of his room and kills Johnny immediately with his rifle. The movie ends when both the son and father sit outside, and eat their lunch. Billy thanks his dad for what he did for him. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe recap in minutes for more videos like this, and help the channel grow.